How you doing everybody? It's time for the first vlog of 2017 and we're kicking it off with a look at Hidden Figures starring Taraji P. Henson, Octavia Spencer, and Janelle Monet. This is based on the true story of Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson. Three ladies who worked for the segregated West Area Computers Division of Langley Research Center back when computers were people and not machines. And Hidden Figures tells the story of the role these incredible women played in the American space program and the barriers they helped break down in the process. I was hoping I would start 2017 off on a high note, and this movie did not disappoint in that regard. This is a solid, well-made, well-acted, feel-good movie, and such an amazing story. And I am so impressed by just how determined these women were to succeed in spite of all the shit they had to go through. Monet plays Mary Jackson, who starts out as a computer, but really wants to be an engineer. Unfortunately, the only way she can become an engineer is by taking night classes at a local high school, which, surprise, only allows white students because Brown vs. Board of Education be damned. And she actually has to go to court to convince a local judge to grant her the right that was already granted to her by the Supreme Court many years prior. Blows my mind. Spencer plays Dorothy Vaughn, who for all intents and purposes is a supervisor, but is constantly denied the title and the pay grade that comes with it for one bullshit reason or another. Nevertheless, she continues to work her ass off, and when the fine folks at IBM bring in a supercomputer, she sees the writing on the wall and realizes eventually that machine is going to take her job, so she actually teaches herself Fortran so she can get a new job as a programmer on that machine, and by the end of the movie, she's teaching other people how to program it. Awesome. And Henson plays Katherine Johnson, a genius mathematician who is brought in to assist the team that is calculating the trajectory for the Mercury spacecraft that will hopefully allow a human to orbit the Earth a few times and then bring him safely back down to land. And at first, she's just supposed to check the math of her co-workers, but her genius will not be contained, damn it, and by the end of the movie, she's the one coming up with the math. But she's got to put up with a lot of shit to get to that point. She's got to deal with a bunch of ignorant-ass white men who can't possibly fathom a woman doing math. Why, that's unheard of. And not just a woman, but a b b black woman? <sighs> what does this country come to? These men won't even let her drink out of the same coffee pot as them because I guess they're afraid that somehow a black woman drinking out of their coffee will poison them? I, I don't know. I, I really don't. And she's held to different standards than her co-workers just because there's a scene where she's told she's not allowed to wear jewelry by a white lady who's clearly wearing earrings. And when she wants to take a piss, she's got to walk half a mile to do so because there's only one building in the entire goddamn Langley Research Center that has a colored ladies room. And what really amazes me about all this is not only the fact that this shit actually happened, which is bad enough, but that it happened for no good goddamn reason at all. When Dorothy decides to teach herself how to program that IBM supercomputer, she actually has to sneak a book on Fortran out of the public library because, well, that book's in the white section and those books aren't for you black folks to read. Your books are over there in the corner. Why? <laughs> Mary has to beg a judge to allow her to do what is already her legal right. Why? And Catherine, despite being clearly the smartest person in her department, is not allowed to attend any of the staff meeting because, well, there's no protocol for allowing a woman into these meetings. Why does this require protocol? I only got so much in me, you know? This is definitely the kind of movie that will have you saying more than once, fucking white people. And most of the people in this movie are not very overtly racist. There's no one yelling, go back to Africa or any shit like that. They're very politely racist, which... Honestly, I don't know if that's better, because at least with the go back to Africa types, they're very upfront and honest about being raging assholes. The people in this movie are the type that will smile to your face and then stab you in the back. There's a scene in this movie where Kirsten Dunst's character tells Octavia Spencer, you know, I really don't have anything against you people. And Spencer, without missing a beat, says, I'm sure you actually believe that. Nailed it! 
The only white dude in this movie who shows these ladies the proper respect from the very beginning is John Glenn, played by Glenn Powell. Yes, Glenn plays Glenn. And I'm sure I'm the 50,000th person to say that, and I am not sorry. And I honestly don't know if that's an accurate reflection of the real John Glenn, but I would certainly like to think it is. And Powell's performance was pretty good. In fact, all of the acting in this movie is pretty solid. Even Kevin Costner was a bit more motivated than he usually is. And thankfully, Jim Parsons was a bit more reserved than he usually is. So if you were worried about him basically playing another version of his Big Bang Theory character, he's toned it down a bit. You can relax. He's fine. Monet was great, Spencer was every bit as strong as you would expect, but Taraji P. Henson really gets her chance to shine in this movie. When her character first starts working on the Mercury Project, she's very quiet and reserved and really just doing her best not to rock the boat in spite of all the shit she has to deal with because this is a huge opportunity for her and she doesn't want to screw it up. But over time, as everything keeps piling on, she finally hits the breaking point and just says, you know what? Fuck it. I'ma rock this boat. I'ma capsize this bitch. And when she finally gets to that breaking point, it is glorious. And Henson really nails it in that scene. So final verdict, best movie I've seen all year. Again, I'm not sorry for these bad jokes. I'm not sorry at all. But seriously, this was really good. I definitely recommend checking it out. And I would not be surprised if this gets some love at the Oscars this year. And technically, I believe it should be eligible because it did get a limited release on Christmas Day, kind of similar to what The Revenant did last year. So it'll probably get a few nominations, maybe even Best Picture. It'll lose to La La Land, but hey, nominations are good too. And that's about all I got to say about Hidden Figures. So until next time, take care.